Hi guys, welcome back. This is lecture number two, which is more or less a housekeeping episode. Now in this I'm going to go over the uh, textbooks you'll need for the class, the classroom policies, the major assignments, and then I'm going to take you on a tour of the software we'll be using Canvas. So hopefully if you've been having any technical problems with the software, uh, that will resolve it. Um, however, now uh, I'm a big fan of Bear Grylls. I love the, the guy. I've even read his uh, books. I uh, watched the show Man vs. Wild. Now he's got a new one called Get Out Alive, which I've been watching. And, uh, for my birthday, my uh, wife bought me this Bear Grylls knife. And, and what's cool about this is, in addition to the uh, you know, actual uh, blade, which is cool, uh, you've got a sharpener built in, as you can see there, and a little fire starter kit. And, it's got instructions on it and a little document for you know how to signal a plane if it's passing overhead and so on. But the most important part of this knife, as far as survival is concerned, is this little thing right here. That is a whistle that you can blow and hopefully someone far away will hear that and come and rescue you. Now the reason I mention this is that uh, this whistle is a communication device. And it's uh, the thing that's going to save you. It's going to do a lot more to save you than the knife and <laughs> the fire sharpener. If you can blow this whistle enough and get somebody to come help you, uh, then you'll survive. So I think that's a nice way to talk about these, uh, this class. There will be times when you're not sure what to do. Maybe you can't, maybe you're supposed to post, you know you're supposed to post on the forum, but oh my god, you don't, new to computers, you're not uh, computer savvy, uh, you try things and you try things, it doesn't work, what can you do? Blow the whistle. Uh, in other words, go to the, uh, send me an email. Uh, you can also visit me in my office hours. I'm in building, 50, uh, building 51, not area 51, although it might as well be if, as long <laughs> since I'm there. Uh, room 158. So building 51, uh, room 158. Now we'll have uh, the office hours posted. If I'm not in the office at the moment, uh, don't panic. I might have just uh, stepped out for a bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's advisable to send me an email first just so I know that you're coming and I can make sure that nobody else will be in your slot. So just send me an email. That's mdbarton at stcloudstate.edu. Edu. Uh, say what the problem is and uh, when you like to, to meet. I can see what I can do. Um, otherwise, uh, you can always call the Husky Help Desk. I'll put the number up here for you. Uh, they can help with just about any computer problem as far as Windows and Macs and your browsers and uh, viruses and all these kind of things that you might have. A lot of students start to panic. Oh my God, my computer has a virus or it's taking forever to load the Explorer screen. Well, that's why you're paying a student tuition. So you can, uh, part of that tuition is this Husky Help Desk. It's free. You can just take your laptop there, just give it to them, tell them what the problem is, and they can uh, usually fix it for you, or at least tell you it's broken, time to get a new machine. Anyway, that go there first. They know a lot more than I do as far as uh, you're fixing your computer. Now, if it's a problem about uh, the projects we're doing, you got a question about the homework or anything like that, that's uh, what you should ask me about. Uh, technical kind of stuff with the computer, uh, go to them. I might be able to help, but probably I'll just refer you to them as well. Now, uh, you can also, and this, I cannot encourage this enough, instead of just sending an email, if you've got the system more or less figured out, you can post a question in the discussion forum. And as you can see, I have a special folder there just for that kind of question. Now, you should ask the question there because it, for one, it will also go out to all the other students in the class, and they might be able to help you uh, just as well as I can, if not better. Uh, plus, if I do manage to help you, it's probably the case that other students have the same question. And it's nice to have, instead of me just you know, sending out the same email again and again, if I can just say, hey, go look at the forum. Um, I've already answered that question. There it is. Uh, that's a lot nicer and more convenient for everybody. So, so please look, th think about the forum first. Obviously, if it's a personal kind of thing, uh, then send me an email or call me or come, come and see me. I definitely will not uh, bite you. I, <laughs> actually, I, I think it says a lot about a student if the student will take the time to get off of his or her butt, come to the professor's office and ask a question. Uh, that really makes a good impression on me. I think, you know, the student's got a lot of dedication there to, to do that. I know it's an online class, but if you're, you know, <laughs> sometimes you have to actually get in the car. Uh, okay, as far as textbooks go, 
Uh, the first textbook you'll need for this class is called uh, Husky's Write, A Writer's Guide to Composition and College Life. Now, this is what's cool about this book is it's produced right here on campus uh, by Professor Rex Vuter and a student named Jason Tam, who I've, who I've taught, as well as, uh, you know, Rex has taught him. Uh, but anyway, it's a great book. It's uh, got lots of pictures and things in here just about St. Cloud State. So I really like this because uh, for a lot of students, English 191 is one of their very first classes that they take. Maybe that you don't know very much about the university yet. Well, this, uh, this book has a lot more in it than just writing advice. Uh, you can also learn a lot about the campus, what's available here, the resources. Uh, the Right Place is a, for example, is a writing center where it's basically a free tutoring service. You can bring your papers in there and have them uh, look over them and give you advice. Or if you don't even have an idea for a paper yet, you can go there and uh, work with you know, A-plus level students uh, at the undergrad and graduate levels, and they can help you. Now, I managed uh, the right place. I was the director last uh, semester, so I know firsthand these people really know what they're doing, and they're very helpful, and they really appreciate it when you go by. So I'll put the number here uh, for the right place for you and the website as well. And it's a really good idea not to wait until the paper's due to go in. You know, go in a little earlier, two weeks or a week before, and just talk about the project. Uh, that you have coming up. And this will work for any class that involves writing. It doesn't have to be English 191. It could be any of your other classes. Okay, but anyway, that's just one of the many things you'll learn here in, with Husky's Write. Now, the other book is called uh, Understanding Rhetoric. And you'll notice something about this book right away is that it's uh, not in standard textbook form. It's a comic book, a.k.a. a, a graphic novel. And I, I happen to know the authors of this. They're very cool and uh, very high-profile compositionists. But what's cool about the book is that the, uh, you know, they could have just put some cartoons in here just for, for, for frills, basically, but they, they, it's a lot more than that. They actually use the graphics to uh, illustrate the concepts they're trying to get across. And I think that's great because a lot of these concepts uh, with, re with rhetoric, it's hard to get that across just in text form. If you have something like this where you can show uh, through the pictures what's going on, it really makes it a lot easier to grasp. You know, you're kind of trying to learn about writing. Sometimes you need something besides just ordinary writing uh, to get those points across. So I think it's a really great book. I mean, you, you could read this for pleasure even, and you'll make all your friends really jealous that they're taking other 191 classes because you get to read a graphic novel. Okay, so those are the books. Uh, now... As far as the projects are concerned, we have four main projects. Uh, one is the, the first one will be coming up next week, and I'll talk more about it later, uh, so don't panic. But it's called the Ideal Learning Experience Project. Now, uh, you can read the details about this. None of these essays are very long. Uh, they're about 1,000 to 1,200 words each, which amounts to about two or three pages. Uh, now, this uh, first project is about a teacher that made an impact on you. Uh, basically one of those life lessons kind of deals. Doesn't have to be a school teacher. Could be anybody who has taught you anything that has really made a difference in your life, inspired you uh, to want to go into a career perhaps. Or maybe it's just a really good life lesson. It could be, for example, a drill sergeant if you're in the military. If you, are, if you have a job, maybe you have a supervisor that's really helped you. Um, it could be somebody at a church or uh, whatever sort of religious institution you belong to. Doesn't really matter uh, to me as long as there's something that has been taught, <laughs> right? You know, a lot of, I remember some of the better ones I've read over the years. Uh, there was a guy who wrote about his uh, taxidermy class. And the, uh, what made the project so cool was he really got into like the, not just the sort of subject matter of the class, we talked about how it smelled. And if you don't know what taxidermy is, it's basically they, they stuff dead animals, right? So dead animals really have a, <laughs> an odor. So he went into detail about sort of the gross out part of the job. It was almost like an episode of Dirty Jobs in an essay form. I mean, it's just awesome. I love that. Uh, but other people have written about, oh, uh, volunteer work they've done perhaps where they met somebody uh, that sort of inspired them to want to go into a field, perhaps a nursing uh, could be somebody, some people have teachers that they like so much they actually wanted to become a teacher. 
you know, just based on that experience. So just be thinking about all of the great teachers in your life and which one you'd like to write about. That's uh, the first project. Uh, from there, we'll go into uh, what's called the uh, rhetorical analysis. And that's where we'll really be getting into the uh, technical part of the class. We'll, you'll know about ethos, pathos, and logos by that point. You'll be able to break down a, a television commercial, a political uh, television presidential campaign commercial, and uh, tell me, basically, you're analyzing, you're breaking it into parts, you're talking about how it works, how is it, how do they try to be persuasive in that? What's the target audience of the commercial? And then, uh, you know, it's putting together a nice argument about whether it was effective or not. So that's, a, you know, a step up, but we'll get there. And then the uh, third project is the um, uh, ethical perspective. Took me a second there. And that is basically the classic argumentative essay with uh, sources. And, you know, that's going to be probably the hardest of the three because there's a lot you have to know about how to find sources, how to evaluate sources, how to put them in without plagiarizing. Uh, so I'm putting that towards the end because we'll have, we've got a long ways to build up before we get there. And then the uh, last project, just to kind of end on a high, easy note, we've got the movie review. Uh, some people do books, some people do classes, some people do albums of music. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but basically you're reviewing something in detail. You're writing a, an evaluation is really what you're doing. And it's an argument, believe it or not, because you have to basically say whether this is worth watching or worth listening to, worth reading, and then back that up with uh, solid reasons uh, based on your experience. Uh, but anyway, usually students really love that assignment. And I, you know, I like to, always like to end a class in the you know, on a high note. Now at the end, uh, you'll take those four projects and you'll look at the comments that I've made on them as well as what your peers have done and put it into a portfolio. So you'd be taking four essays, putting it together into a nice uh, costly portfolio, e-portfolio in this case. Now what's nice about that is if you ever transfer out of St. Cloud State, go somewhere else, uh, they're gonna wanna know if you are qualified to basically exit out or be exempt from their version of this class, English uh, 191. Might be called first year writing there or uh, composition 101 or something like that. Well, if you've got this portfolio, then you can give that to them and say, look, I don't need to take the class. I've already taken a class like this. Here's the work I've done. And then you'll more than likely get credit and won't have to take it. So in other words, when you get to this point, I'll, I'll remind you again at the end, but just uh, already, even now, I want you to be thinking long term with this, right? So these essays that you're writing for this class, you could turn around and use those later on in your college career. Okay, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, also, uh, this Canvas software that we'll be using. Uh, every week, you need to log into this site. Well, let me back up a little bit. Twice a week, you need to log into this website and look at what's going on. Now, there'll be announcements here at the home page. If you go a little deeper, you'll notice uh, discussions, and you need to keep an eye on that as well. These are communications from me as well as your classmates, and try to uh, get active on these, uh, these forums. Now, 10% of your grade will be based on the participation on these forums, and to get the full 10%, what I need to see is at least you, you're logging in at least twice a week and making a post on this site. It doesn't have to be a huge post or even a long post, but being active. Now what I like, what I would really like to see is you're on here three or four times a week, you're leaving uh, three or four messages. Um, instead of thinking of a huge, you know, three or four hundred uh, word paragraph, maybe just a few sentences here and there. But what it shows is by the end of the class, when I draw it up, I can see that, you know, Bobby has uh, logged into this site uh, every week, two or three times, made a Probably by that point, you know, a good 30 to 40 posts over the course of the semester. That's an A uh, participation, no question. Uh, now, the ones that score lower is going to be for reasons, a couple of different things. Uh, one would be the posts don't really contribute anything. It's just, yeah, man, that's cool, or uh, you're, you suck, you know, you know basically non-productive stuff. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to count that uh, as highly if at all, or, uh, you know, any type of uh, host, host, hostile, hostility, uh, that kind of stuff will not only get you a lower grade, it might actually get you banned uh, from the board. You, you don't want to do that. So just be respectful. You can disagree with somebody without being a jerk about it. You know, just exercise a little politeness, a little respect uh, for your fellow classmates and uh, for your professor, as well as yourself. And uh, 
Uh, so if, if you don't, if you want, if you want to make an A on that, log in two or three times, make two or three posts a week, and you're good. Um, if you want to do lower, then wait till the very end and then try to make this huge, oh my God, I waited to the last minute, so now I'm going to make 50 posts all in one day. Uh, that, forget about it. Don't even bother with that. That's not helpful to anybody. Uh, what, what is helpful, logging in regularly, making posts regularly, not trying to wait till the end and then making this huge, uh, you know, uh, avalanche of posts. Uh, don't do that. That will only serve to make me mad as well as irritate your classmates. Okay, so I think we have covered everything, all the basics. You know that you need to log into the site at least twice a week. You know you need to make a post at least once a week, preferably more than that. Uh, you know what the textbooks are, and you know uh, you got sort of a heads up of what's coming with these projects. Now, uh, the subsequent lectures will be, uh, next few anyway, the f next one after this will be about the Ideal Learning Experience Project, and we'll look at the subject of rhetoric and what it means and how you can start to get better. So anyway, we've got lots of great stuff coming up and see you guys next time.